Hey, it's Andrew Huang. We're doing this. I know it's gonna be a controversial one. The Mac versus PC debate has raged on for decades, and more recently we've seen iOS versus Android. Let me just start by saying I am not an Apple fanboy. I think there are great things about them. There are also a lot of things that Apple's not getting right. Currently, I use both a Mac and a PC for different computing things, and uh, for my phone, I have switched back and forth between iOS and Android. This video is also not a blanket statement about Apple being better all the time, no matter what, there are things about PCs that are better than Macs, there are things about Android that are better than iOS. However, if making music with these devices is your goal, then overall Apple wins by a little bit when it comes to computers and by a lot when it comes to phones and tablets. Let me try to explain why that is. <laughs> So let's start with iOS versus Android. This has come up a lot in my community lately because I just released an app. It's called Flip. It's a really powerful sampler, sequencer, groove box. And from the beginning, I wanted to make it cross-platform. I really wanted it to be as accessible a tool as possible. And we even priced it at $10, which is way less than what an app that can do this much would usually cost. But I was working with some very experienced developers who made a strong case for doing iOS only at first and then porting it to Android only if we saw it become successful. I learned a lot from from them and I kept researching this on my own and there are actually quite a few reasons why iOS simply beats out Android for music making and I was completely unaware of these things even as a music production nerd and someone who's used both platforms. So first, iOS hardware is better optimized for audio. In a test of over 200 devices, it was found that on average, Android audio latency was four and a half times slower than iOS, and Android audio glitchiness was 30 times worse. On every Apple device tested, the latency landed between five and nine milliseconds. On the Android devices, the latency tended to hover between 30 and 40 milliseconds, but there were also some devices in the hundreds of milliseconds. Only one Android device came in under 10 milliseconds, which was the Google Pixel two at 7.61. So right off the bat, we have one Android device that performs as well on audio latency as the average iOS device. And besides that, every single one they tested was slower than every iPad and iPhone. This is a massive deal. If you're working on music, you need to be able to do stuff in as close to real time as possible. Now this has been improving over the years with Android devices and hopefully one day they'll catch up. But for now, if you wanna do music production on an Android, you're gonna have to research your device before you buy it and hope that there's information out there about its audio latency, and uh, it's likely that to get the performance that you want, you'll have to buy a more premium device. In contrast, you can buy any iOS device released in the last few years and know that you'll be fine for music production. I've actually been doing a lot of the tutorial content for Flip on an iPad from 2013. The next thing we'll look at is the popularity of devices. Android is by far the more popular platform. Estimates have it at around 80% of the market share. And in my research, I saw figures as low as 73% and as high as 87%. So you would think it would make better business sense to develop a product for the platform that more people are on. But those numbers don't tell the whole story because of fragmentation. Fragmentation refers to the huge number of different devices that are out there. I couldn't find more up-to-date info than 2015 when there were already more than 24,000 different types of Android devices in the world. Compare that to Apple in 2021, there are a total of 29 iPhones, 25 iPads, and seven iPod Touches that have ever been available. So with Android, you're dealing with an unfathomable number of different hardware configurations, all of which will affect an app in different ways. Whereas on iOS, it actually would be within reason to have a big enough team of testers that you could check out an app on every possible device. So developers are able to be much more confident in their work. The process of making the app is easier and faster. When the app is out, it's less work to support and maintain and update it. And all of that translates into better app quality overall for the user. I'll give you a quick example. With Flip, we found there was one iPhone where the text in the sample pads got cut off a little bit. Uh, these elements need to be dynamic and change for different screen sizes, so occasionally you run into problems like this. And it's not hard to fix, but you have to know that there's a problem in order to fix it, and there's no way to test tens of thousands of different screen sizes. And the problems could be worse, too. A little bit of text cut off just makes the app look bad, but what if there was one weird screen size where it just got cut off to the point that you couldn't see the text there? Then we'd have a bunch of users thinking that after you load a file, there's no way to tell what file it is. They won't have a good experience of the app. It will be unusable to them, really, and uh, they'll think we're terrible designers and leave us a bad review. 
Now, fragmentation also happens on the level of the operating system. One report found that 95% of iOS users have one of the latest two operating systems installed. By contrast, on Android, just look at this graph. Nowhere on this graph is there a time when you even had a simple majority of users on the same operating system. The closest we come is in 2013 when 48.6% of users were on Jelly Bean. In 2020, we had slightly less than a third of users on Pi and the rest is even more fragmented than that. All these little slices of the Android market are using a different operating system on one of thousands of different devices and app developers have to hope that every part of their code holds up across all of it. Point number three, money. As I've talked with various developers in the app world, there's been a distinct sense that the culture of the Google Play Store is very different from the culture of the iOS App Store. It seems on Android, there's more of an expectation of things to be cheap or free, and people engage a lot less with in-app purchases. I have an email from one developer who said, they got a load of comments along the lines of, looks wicked, will you do it for Android because I hate Apple? We converted for Android, we never got our 10,000 pounds of development money back. This email is just from a couple months ago. It's from someone who had a successful iOS app and the Android version has been in the Play Store for five years. And by the way, 10,000 pounds is not some crazy expensive app. That is a very reasonable rate for months of a developer's time. And remember, this was just porting an app that already existed over to Android. It costs a lot more to develop a complex music making app from scratch. Now, of course, this is just anecdotal and it's just one example. There could be a lot of reasons why this app did well in iOS and not on Android. So let's look at the bigger picture. Is there a way that we could tell that people spend more money in the App Store than in the Play Store? Yes, let's look at how much money they make. The Play Store's gross revenue for 2020 was $38.6 billion. Gigantic amount of money. The App Store's gross revenue for 2020 was $72.3 billion. And this is not an anomaly. If we look at previous year's data, a similar proportion plays out. So apps on iOS are making almost twice as much money, but remember, there are fewer iOS users. We saw that the market share for Android was anywhere from 73 to 87%. We'll call it 80, 20, totally just rounding off the couple of percent that BlackBerry and Windows and other smaller operating systems take up. Uh, so for easy math, 80% Android users, 20% iOS users. If you're making almost twice as much money from one fifth as many people, each of those people is spending almost 10 times as much money. And it actually gets even worse if you consider how many apps there are. I found a recent stat that said there are 1.85 million apps in the App Store and 2.56 million apps in the Play Store. So dividing this money per app, you also have a substantially worse outcome for Android. And this brings me to my next point, which is quality. This is also an area where Android has been improving, but from the start, Apple had a stricter app approval process. They had a manual review. You have an Apple employee, an actual human being, looking at every single app before it goes live in the store. Google has started doing this as well, but you did have a period of a few years where it was an automated approval process, and that just filled up the Play Store with a not insignificant number of lower quality apps or even malware. So not as much of an issue anymore, but still when using the Play Store compared to the App Store, I do find I have to wade through a lot more mediocre options before finding the right app for me. And then there's the quality of the hardware. Apple devices being more expensive, have great build quality and are long lasting. Again, I've been filming a lot of my flip content on an eight year old iPad. Of course, premium options exist on Android, but then you're paying close to the same as the Apple prices. And on average on Android, it's cheaper devices that don't hold up as long and suffer from issues like the bad audio latency that we talked about earlier. And the last thing I'll say in the iOS versus Android part of this video, because of everything we've just talked about, there are way more music making apps on iOS. So even if you're not thinking about how good or bad it is for developers, or if your Android's audio latency is totally fine, if you just wanna get a device and be able to make music on it, there are a lot more things you can do on iOS. So taking all of this into consideration, understandably for developers working on more complex apps like music production apps, they're not gonna be as motivated to bring it to Android where they can expect to make much less money doing more work supporting more devices and operating systems. For those of you interested in Flip, I did wanna let you know that we're doing Android tests. We're gonna see if it's viable. We're gonna see if it works on enough of the most popular and affordable devices Devices, that it would be worth it to commit to the development time as well as the support that it'll need after it comes out. So I wanna let you know that we're gonna do our best, but if it doesn't happen, all of the above is why, and I will be very sad about that.
So now let's talk Mac versus PC, and I should specify, we're just gonna be talking about the main contender, Windows, in this video. I've used both for music making extensively. Uh, currently I use a Mac for music and a PC for video editing. It just made more sense to have the machines be separate and optimized for their own tasks, and since I don't use the PC for anything except video editing, uh, I was able to get a much more affordable deal there, even with top of the line graphics cards and all that. We all know price is not an area where Apple is gonna win. But in use for music making, I prefer Mac as a lot of musicians do. Why is that? Well, a good part of it is just this sort of legacy holdover reputation that Apple has because Macs were the first mass-marketed computers to have a graphical user interface. This was in the 80s. And then in the early 90s, they were the first to offer the capability of audio recording. So for a solid chunk of time, Apple did have a big advantage for creatives, uh, artists, graphic designers, musicians. And by the time other companies caught up to these kinds of innovations, the reputation had been cemented. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. So these days, there's very little advantage that Macs have over PCs when it comes to music making. And PCs have some advantages of their own. They're of course more affordable and more customizable, but uh, there are a couple things that I think still give Apple the edge. The first thing is smoother operation. Some of this will come down to people's personal preferences with their operating systems, but for me, as someone who spent roughly equal amounts of time in my life on both Macs and PCs, and being comfortable with a variety of OSs on both, I do find that in general, Macs are more streamlined and efficient to work on. There are a lot of tiny examples, but to name a few, you're never interrupted and forced to do an update. Folks who use both types of machines tend to say that there are less viruses to deal with on Macs, and uh, I've found that to be true for myself. For some music specific examples, Macs out of the box are already set up to handle aggregate audio devices. I also don't think I've ever had to download a driver to get a third party uh, piece of hardware to work with my Macs. That saying about Apple products, it just works, I find is quite true. Second, we touched on this with iOS versus Android as well, but because Apple is a premium brand, the products are generally better built and longer lasting. So while it might not feel right to pay twice as much for a machine with basically the same specs, if it lasts you twice as long, the value is about the same. And probably the biggest thing in Apple's favor is stability, which people usually attribute to the fact that it's just one company making the hardware and the software, whereas with PCs, there are tons of different companies creating the individual components that could end up in your machine. So on Macs, there's way less freezing and way less crashing, and this has been true comparing any Mac that I've had with any Windows machine that I've had. And I know we only have anecdotal evidence for this kind of thing, but if you don't believe me, hey! <laughs> How are you? Great. This is my friend Laura Escudet, who is a total boss. She's worked with tons of artists on designing and running their live shows, including being the playback engineer for American Idol and eight years worth of Kanye West tours. So in her world, everything needs to be rock solid. These are high profile events. And when I asked her about the balance of Macs to PCs in her industry, she said, no PC is used ever. So I got her on Zoom to explain why. I think it's the stability. As a former PC user um, for music back in the day before I could afford a Mac, <laughs> I used uh, PCs pretty heavily and I just found them to be unstable and I never knew if it was going to crash or what was going to happen. And once I started working with Macs and just discovered how solid they were, I just went Mac only. And then when I got into the live performance world and, and playback, just everything was so solid with a Mac. I would never want to change it or switch anything up once you find something that works really well. And across the industry, this is like pretty much the standard. Yeah, I've never been to a show and seen someone running a PC. You've got a MacBook Pro or some people uh, get Mac menus or even the trash can, but most people are running a MacBook Pro laptop. So that's the case I'm making for Mac stability. Of course, when you're making music at home, the stakes are not as high as a Kanye concert. And even if you could get a computer that's a bit more stable, you might decide that it's not worth the price for you. At the end of the day, with all of this Mac versus PC stuff, it doesn't make a massive difference. The music that you would want to make on a Mac, you can still make on a PC. It's definitely a bit different when it comes to iOS versus Android. I think some of the stuff we looked at earlier showed that there are some clear benefits that iOS currently has over Android. But uh, yeah, that is my whole piece about why Apple overall is a bit better for people making music and why a lot of people in the music world prefer Apple products. If you have any thoughts, leave a comment. And if you're an iOS user, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, check out my app, Flip Sampler. It's in the App Store. And hopefully one day in the Play Store as well. All right, see you next time.